A few years ago, I started to notice all these ads for coaches, and I started to get a little confused. Why are there so many coaches, and exactly what do they do? Well, if you've had the same question, stick around, because today that's what we're going to talk about, the coaching relationship. Good afternoon. My name is Christine Harper. And I'm Ernie Davis. And we're here from Powerhouse, Powerhouse Motivations. Motivations. And we're glad that you're here with us. Today, we decided to talk about what the coaching relationship really entails. It is said that you should have a team of people in your life if you want to reach success. You know what, Christine? I normally like to say that there's the five most important people in your life that everyone should surround themselves with, especially if you're a professional, if you're an entrepreneur, or if you're a public speaker who utilizes your speaking skills to help other people grow or to train and educate people. I usually say there's five people. And we don't talk about, we won't talk about it a lot today, but I always say there's a coach, mentors, advisors, team players. And if you want to know the fifth, they're going to have to stick around for that. But what is this? What is this coaching and mentoring? You know, it all gets very, very, very confusing. And if you guys think this is kind of confusing, hey, go ahead and click the like button right now. Let us know that you also think it's, it's confusing trying to figure out what's the difference between a coach, a mentor, advisor, and, you know, you hear all these different coaches. What's the difference? Well, let me start with a mentor. And let me also start by saying that many people now will just simply call themselves a coach. Yeah, but if you're right. looking for someone to coach you, you want to ask some questions because let's define a mentor. Mm. A mentor is someone who has already done exactly what you're trying to do. I understand what you're saying. You're saying that a mentor is actually a person who's actually done what it is that you're trying to do. They've done it before. Mm -hmm. There was a time when I wanted to write a book. I hired a writing coach who was, so her title was a writing coach, but really she was a mentor. Hold up, Christine, hold up, hold up. I, I've got to ask a question. So you're telling me that you hired a person who advertised themselves as a writing coach, but mm -hmm. once you actually started working with them, you actually discovered that they were actually a mentor? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Now, what's, what's really important there is that you are already clear on what it is you want to do. Got you. Got you. That makes, that makes a big difference. You know, I had somebody explain it to me one, one time. I said, a mentor is someone who knows the way and can show you the way. But they say the thing about a mentor, they say the thing about a mentor that you have to know, right? And this, was my, my, this was actually my mentor who told me this, Mr. Michael. He said, the thing you have to know about a mentor is mentors will show you the way they did it. And they're going to explain to you exactly how they did it. And they're going to tell you exactly how it worked for them. And Mr. Michael, he really broke it down with me. He, he helped me to understand that just because it worked for them following a certain process doesn't mean it's going to work exactly the same way for you because you're different. You're not them. You don't have their life experiences. And he said, Ernie, if you understand that, then you will be able to be an awesome coach. You know, and at the time I was working as an advisor. Yeah, what's that? What was that? What's an advisor? An advisor is simply a person who gives advice. Someone that you really trust. Someone that you trust so much that you're willing to take their advice. You know, kind of like if you envision like some of the powerful CEOs or maybe like a man who's a head of a country, you know, like a president. They normally have a long table and around their table there's normally sitting different people, with different areas of expertise. Those are actually their personal advisors, their advisors. And each, the, the, the person who's in the middle, the president or the CEO, he's responsible for listening to all the different advice that he receives from those people. He may follow all of the advice. He may follow none of the advice. If he's smart, he's going to follow the, the best advice available. Okay. But that's an advisor. And so I, I really learned that, okay, that's the difference between an advisor. And I, I understood, you know, from what Mr. Michael said and from what you said, that a, a mentor is someone who's done exactly what you're trying to do. And so then it, it left it to coaching. Mm -hmm. and what I discovered about coaching, Christine, I discovered that a coach may have never done the exact thing that you're trying to do. Their job is not to necessarily to give you advice, but the coach's job is actually to partner with you, kind of work one, you know, one-on-one -on -one with you, team up with you, strong team. You guys come together. And the coach's job is to hear 
what it is that you desire. Very good. Very yeah. good. Because what I'm hearing is, well, this is what I'm hearing, and mm -hmm. I know what we do. Yep. As coaches, we listen. That's probably, that's over 50% of the job. You mm -hmm. listen to what a client is saying, because sometimes what's coming out of their mouth is not really what they intend or what they're really thinking. You're right. And you know what I know what I often discover, Christine? Often I discover, you know, as I'm either I'm working with a public speaker or if I'm working with an entrepreneur, one of the things I often discover is that often the client will say something. They will say things. And I hear the words coming from their mouth, but they really don't hear their own words. They really don't realize the words that they're saying. And the coach's job is to figure out, hey, I heard what you said. That person said it. They didn't really pay attention. You know, I heard that what you wanted to talk about. I heard the story that you wanted to talk about. You wanted to talk about a childhood sickness or disease that you had, but you were afraid. And it was my job as a coach to hear that and to figure out how can we bring that out? How can we bring that, that, how can we bring that story out? Because we went through that experience and, and something prompted you to actually share that story with the world. And it's the coach's job is to help you What's that term you used to use, Christine? I think you used to say net it out when you were with IBM. You say you guys used to use the term net it out. Is that, is that the right quote? Net it out. Get to the point. Let's just figure out what the most important, what the salient points are of this discussion. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's what yeah. the coaches do well. And when they find out what it is that you really want to talk about, and then it's their job also in this coaching field, in, in public speaking coaching, you know, one of the things that we have the advantage of, Christine, and you know this very well, we all we talk about most of the time is public speaking. We talk about evaluations. We evaluate speakers. You know, we're constantly, yeah. you know, if we're not eva evaluating a presentation in person, then we're evaluating presentations on like YouTube. We're listening to clips on Facebook. And so we yeah. have that wealth of knowledge and we know what makes the difference between somebody who's not good, somebody who's medium good, and somebody who's stellar. You know, people who are making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year as public speakers, people who are influencing thousands and thousands of people. You know, and that, that's what we, I think that's what we do very well as coaches. Yeah. I'm always looking for someone who is effective, effective mm -hmm. in what they're trying, whatever message they're trying to get across. Yeah. Now, I brought that up because a lot of times we're working on one thing, but because we are listening to what you're saying, we may realize that you need to pivot. We yeah. may realize that you need to do something just slightly different. The coach is to help you move forward, not yeah. to keep staying stuck going around in circles. Yeah. And the only way we can do that is by having an agreed upon relationship. Mm -hmm. We're going to meet at a certain time, certain mm -hmm. date on yeah. a regular basis. Uh, we're going to agree to do a little bit of homework because the, the coaching is all about a certain process and mm -hmm. we want to help you go through that process. And so when we ask you to go back and, and think about X, Y, and Z or do a little bit of homework, which is all mental homework, mm -hmm. you got to do it. Yeah, you definitely have to do it. You know, I, I love that. I love the coaching relationship, Christine. I got to tell you, you know, I'm working with people in their young 30s, 33, uh -huh. 32, but I've also had the pleasure of working with guys in their late, their late 50s. Their late 50s. I had one guy I was working with, he's 62 years old. You know, and one of the amazing things that I've discovered is that that coaching relationship, you get to know more about a person. And it doesn't matter if they're 33 or if they're 62, but you get to know so much about them and you get to help them to discover so much more about themselves. You know, I can't tell you how, how amazed I was, you know, when I'm having lunch with a client. He's 62 years old, and he looks over across the table from me, and he tells me at 62 years old how the coaching relationship has, has changed his life, how it has helped him to uncover and understand things that he never knew about himself at 62 years old. And, you know, for me, I'm not quite 62 years old, but to say that I'm working with a client, a guy who's 62 years old, and helped him to have that type of discovery, it's just, it's amazing. It just really tells you how valuable that is. And to yes. be able to work with someone who's, you know, in their 60s or their late 50s and to be able to help them to share their story in a way. You know, some of these stories, guys have been holding on since they were like young kids and they've been wanting to share these stories. 
and he wanted to tell his story his entire life. And we had been working together. And as we were working, you know, one of the, the assignments required him to stand up in front of an audience and give this presentation. And so it just so happens. It, I love the way this happens. It always seems to happen like this. His pastor from his church that he had been going to for, for several years asked him to speak on Father's Day. He asked him to speak on Father's Day at their church. And he got to share an experience that his father shared with him when he was just a little kid. Mm. And it helped Mm -hmm. him discover so much. And he got to tell that story in front of a packed congregation. Mm -hmm. And to know that I helped him do that, because before he was was nervous. You know, he had one of those problems, he he would constantly use filler words like ahs and ahs, and he would get nervous and start to shake, you know, but we worked it out. We worked it out. We nutted it out. We helped him figure out what are the points. And then we helped him to figure out, you know, what, what, what are the lessons that he had acquired over 62 years of living? What are the life lessons that he would love to give to all those young fathers and young men and ladies sitting out in that audience? We figured it out. His life lessons. You know, he came up with 10 points. You know, I think at the church he had about 45 minutes or so to speak. And he, he had 10 points that he wanted to share. That's original. He didn't share them all 10 by the time we were done. But he learned, he figured out which stories were the best, how to put those stories together, how to tell those stories in a way that moved the audience and carried the audience along. So that by the time he was done, more people in the audience are saying, hey, can you come over to my organization and speak? Or, hey, I have a nonprofit. We'd love to hear your speech, you know. Mm-hmm. And, so, so what would you tell somebody who was still a little bit curious and had more questions about the coaching relationship? You know, one of the things I would say, I would say is if you're curious, if you're watching right now and you're curious, here's what we're going to do. Interview a coach. Matter of fact, we're going to put a button. Write that button down there that says book now. That button is for a few free coaching interview, a 45-minute coaching interview. That way you get to talk to a coach. You get to ask your questions one-on-one with a coach. Figure out if this is right for you. Figure out what, what, what is it you're trying to do. Right? What is it you're trying to do? Are you trying to improve your public speaking? Do you have some business aspirations? Talk one-on-one with a coach. Figure out what they're about. See if they're a person that you can jail with, that you can get along with, that you feel comfortable with. Right. And a very decision. important point. Because yeah. there are a variety of coaches out there and a variety of personalities mm-hmm. and experiences out there. And each of us brings something valuable to the table, but you have to feel comfortable in working with us or else the relationship, or else it's not gonna go anywhere and you're not gonna get anything out of it. Yeah, gotta trust the process. Trust the process. And you know, it starts right now. It starts right now. If you're watching now, this is your opportunity. You know, one one of the clients that I work with, he says, he has a saying where he says that, missed opportunity is the most common occurrence in the world. Mm. Mm. He said, missed opportunity is the most common occurrence in the world. And people normally miss the opportunity because they don't press that button that says book now. Don't miss the opportunity. Take us up on the opportunity. Interview a coach. Ask your questions. Ask the questions that you, you're really interested in knowing. Click the button. Schedule it for free. 45 minutes we'll give you to interview the coach. Figure out if it's the right thing for you. And I think that's awesome. What do you think, Christine? I think that's very generous. And I think you should take advantage of it right oh. now. Do that. Click that button. Click like. Share this video. If you know someone who could, could, could benefit, share the video and join us next week. Because next week, we're going to share some more secrets with them, Christine. What are we going to talk about next week? If you don't tell them, I'm going to tell them. And I'm going to tell them that they need to join us next week. No, I think you should just show up next week and you'll see what we're going to I think, they should show, I, I think they should show up too because next week we're going to talk about how to slow it down. How to slow down your presentation and deliver that presentation in a way that captures your audience's attention. We're gonna talk about some of the techniques that I use with that 62-year-old gen- gentleman to help him captivate the audience at that church. The same one that had people walking up to him at the end and saying, hey, can you come over and speak to my nonprofit? Hey, can you come over and speak to my group? That's what we wanna do for you because your story, it matters. The world needs your story. The world needs your story. So come on back next week. Thank you for being with us today, and we'll see you soon. Awesome.